So it's now the next morning, we've got more light in here again. These, these English winters are the most terrible thing for natural lighting. Like by three o'clock, four o'clock, it's getting gray. Like it just looks dead in here. So thank God I've got these LED panels. Anyway, let's get the clamps off and see what this looks like. Now, those of you who watched the previous part, so part three of this series, you'll know that I used cascamite to glue this together, which is like a powdered resin glue. Mix it with water and it has a long open time, fills lots of gaps. Same color as wood when it dries, so it's really beneficial. However, the other thing I forgot to mention, which is quite possibly my favorite thing about it, is when it dries in the pot, it is the most satisfying thing to break out. Look. Oh, yeah is great fun so that's how you know it's all dry um there you go so let's get these clamps off so really what i think i should have done here with these parallel clamps is put some in the middle and also on these edges as well because on the mortise joint here it's not quite as tight as i want it to be it's all right but it could be a bit better so i think another cramp there and cramp there would be better just try not to over tighten them too much because these sections won't be able to take as much stress as these but should be fine but when you come to doing this if you're going to do this you should do just bear that in mind it might be worth putting four cramps on it instead you know more cramps the better and all that so there we go that is the frame together let's get it upright in the vise and try and clean it up right so when i mark the shoulder lines on these joints i obviously mark them out so that the end grain would overhang at the end and this means that it's a lot easier to plane that flush rather than plane this entire surface flush with the end grain also, the other advantage here is that if you have any tiny gaps like on the end here, you can actually plane in the direction towards that gap and it's going to break the end grain out and fill it a little bit. So a little trick for you there. So I'm going to get a, I've got a low angle block plane here for this. And low angle planes generally work better for slicing across end grain. So I've got a little gap on this side and I'm just going to plane towards that and I'm also skewing the plane inwards so that it's not going to start punching out the grain on here. There we go, we're pretty much there now, and that gap is gone. Happy days, look at that. Right, and now for the through mortars and tenons. So like I say, this is kind of inevitable, you're gonna get some sort of gap on this. It's pretty perfect side to side, and on this side, closer to the camera, it looks really good. However, on this side here, there's a little bit more of a shadow gap, so I am going to pop the plane on there, and I'm going to skew it towards that, so that the blade starts pushing the grain into that gap. I think I might use the big boy for this. And just like that, that is looking pretty good now. Okay, and now I'm just going to take some through passes with the plane on this edge to flatten the entire thing off. I'm still planing in the direction of where the gap was on this lap joint here, so that gap will stay nice and closed up. So the next one we're going to flush off is the bridle joint here. Now, no glaring gaps on this, so I don't need to plane it in any particular direction. The only thing I have got is a little lump of cascomite here. Now, this dries quite brittle, as you can see, so I generally pair it off with a chisel first before planing it because it makes cleanup a little bit easier. Just watch yourself because it does ping off at quite a velocity sometimes, so just watch your eyes with it. So I know from experience, it bloody hurts. Now let's plane this flush, and I'm going to keep the plane straight on here so that I don't start breaking off the end grain here. There we go, looking lovely. Okay, now end grain on the dovetail halving joint. So again, I've got a tiny gap here that I'm gonna plane towards, break that end grain out. And again, a few through passes. Right, so now to plane all of these faces flush, so I'm gonna use a smoothing plane for this. Simply gonna find the bits that are high, so on this one, these two bits are high, the dovetail is a little bit low. So I can plane across it like that. And here I'm kind of angling the plane like this so that it's shearing the cross grain here and it's still gonna give me a nice clean cut on here. Also, this edge here is less likely to break off if I skew the plane rather than just go straight on, because obviously it's just gonna punch that edge out. Now this one, the bridle joint is sitting proud, so I'm gonna to have to do this surface. Each is quite hard to uh, read the grain direction on it, so you've just got to sort of do this by feel. So again, skewing the plane. There you go, that's all flush, so let's do some larger shavings with it.
And there you go, guys. That is how you make the practice joint frame. So you could obviously sand this, you could finish it, you could frame it. I'm not sure how you'd frame a frame on your wall, but you get the idea. But overall, this is just a way of learning some joints and some simple frame construction. So the most important thing here really is the marking out stage of it. Make sure that the shoulders are parallel on both the top and the side components of it. And yeah, once you've done that marking out, trust that those lines are correct, work to them accurately, work to them carefully, and you'll get some lovely results here. The hardest one you'll find is the through tenon. You will get little gaps on the outside of it. It is so difficult to get right. Like I say, there is individual videos on any of these joints. So the dovetail joint, the half lap joint down here, and the bridle joint. So if you want to see any of those in more depth, I have got links in the description to those videos. And like I say, there will be an article for this in Furniture and Cabinet Making Magazine in the next few months, hopefully. So I'll give a notification on social media when that's out. And yeah, if you bought the copy, that would be amazing. So there we go. Best of luck with it. Um, I will be continuing how to cut certain joints in the future. This was just sort of a good checkpoint to do halfway through. So we'll be moving on to more complex joints eventually. Um, yeah, see you then.